Brad, Tier 2 for Warriors. I am here with uh, Casey. If uh, you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and uh, kind of talk about your your origin story and uh, how you got here today and uh, your clinic. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, appreciate the welcome, Brad. Um, so I am, uh, my name is Casey Whitaker. I'm a pharmacist. Um, I ended up going to Marshall, West Virginia, Marshall University in West Virginia, um, Huntington, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, so I did about nine years there at Marshall yeah. to get my doctoral degree. Um, oh, so you're a legit I'm, pharmacist. I'm a, you're a real, you're a yeah. doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. And um, so I, uh, I, I currently work for CVS at the moment. Um, oh, really? But, uh, you know, we're, we're doing some different things, um, yeah. such as the clinic. Uh, I got into the clinic about, I would say, I would say almost, you know, six months or, or so ago. Um, oh, really? But I've been a patient for a little longer. Um, oh, it's, wow. And that's how it's that's how it started. So, um, you know, like a lot of guys out there, uh, you know, including, um, I don't know, maybe yourself, Brad, uh, but oh, we, we, uh, we, we don't quite have, uh, what we need when we wake up any longer. And, um, so I got to the point where I was, I was tired. I was sluggish. Um, and you know, I did it to myself a long time ago, but I had gotten so used to how I was feeling over about an eight year course that I, you know, I just neglected, you know, I was like, so my backstory is I was, uh, you know, into bodybuilding big time oh, really? and I was, you know, messing around with some things I shouldn't have been messing around with. <laughs> and, um, now is this up, while you're in pharmacy doc school too? So you're like learning um, about the compounds and working with them? Um, well, actually, it's kind of funny that we, uh, yeah, that I ended up there. Originally, my plan was to go to, um, you know, medical school. And I got I got to the point where I was like, you know what, like my real interest is is in treating people. But I also want to understand drugs. I always liked yeah. uh, learning how drugs work, the phys the, you know, the biophysiology behind how they interact in our bodies. And so that's, you know, what kind of led me to, to pharmacy school. Um, and, and it's it, the best you know, it, it's, a, it's, it's a four year doctorate, right? It's a it's a professional doctorate just like a lawyer is, right? Yeah, yeah. So what you'll do is uh four years. Now you can do it in two they have programs where you can do two years of prerequisites and, a and, big and not brain, 160 IQ. But you're already <laughs> weeding out a certain amount of IQ <laughs> no. anyways, right? So you're, you're gonna be getting a lot of big brain people to do that, but two years, that's rough. Well, well, yeah, they do. Um, now it's that you can do a two year prerequisite program and not, um, you know, not receive a bachelor's degree, but it's a, uh, it's a like four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it kind of lets you, if you know where you want to go, it kind of lets you get, um, you know, ahead of the game. So, but, but they didn't have that when I was in school. So I ended up doing four years, um, for a bachelor's degree. And then I did, uh, one year of um, a master's program and con like continuing um, adult education. So what you would, you know, teach, teach adults after they are um, already in their careers. And then I oh, did. Yeah, uh, it's not an MD, right? And it's not a PhD program. So you're really slacking on your uh, curriculum development skills. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so I did, I did, I did that. And then I did a four year pharmaceutical doctorate is what it is. Um, oh, wow. and yeah, so we can't, we can't, we can't prescribe necessarily. Um, but you know, we, we have a lot of drug knowledge and yeah. we can make, make drugs. We can do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but, uh, what, so then, you know, fast forward, I did a few years in, um, in community pharmacy with CVS and, uh, I had actually been through, with, I've been with CVS for like, uh, nine no, eight years now. Oh, and, wow. That's um, a long time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've been with them for about eight years now. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's been great so far. Uh, however, I just feel, um, you know, I felt a calling to, to help other people like myself who needed, uh, to feel better, you know, in their day to day lives. That's, that's yeah. why we do what we do with the clinic. Um, so once I got treatment, for my own 
testosterone levels. Um, I was encouraged to reach out by my friend to get tested in the first place. And, you know, I've been lifted in and I'm like, I'm yeah. putting on muscle <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, there is no way that I have low testosterone, but I just yeah. wanted to see. And I was like, if they could write me a testosterone prescription, sure. I mean, I'd be down to optimize myself. So yeah. I, uh, I look at it, man, I'm going to tell you normal testosterone, which you, you, you already know is, is around. <laughs> you two, probably heard two, through my rant videos on this and like my, uh, I, I, when, okay. So I'm a high school dropout by the way. And I mean, really? I have like, I mean, I have a high school diploma or whatever, but I was a high school okay. dropout and you know, I do all this government stuff, whatever. I don't have any fancy degrees. I mean, I've been to college and stuff, but I was the only yeah. person who emailed Dr. Travis and I'm like, okay, dude, your name is on everybody's prescriptions, right? Everybody's blood labs. What is going yeah. on with this? Why is your name on this? And why yeah. are doctors taking out of context? And, yeah. and he gave you this diatribe of, oh, yeah, you know, it's uh, epidemiological studies and it's a thousand to three thousand people of European aged males between an age group with, you know, various people that are in it. And then he's like, yeah, it cannot be applied to individuals and doctors have to treat people as individuals in clinical practice. And the labs don't mean what people are saying it is I'm like, oh, wow. So I'm the only guy asking <laughs> like some random guy on the <laughs> Internet, you know, just me asking the guy whose name's on everybody's labs. And well, I mean, I'm the guy who did it. So I was like, OK, I guess this is yeah. my, my one claim to fame I get, you know, in terms of you no know, that. And that's awesome. Sometimes it takes reaching out like that, you know. Um, yeah. Like I said, and so that's how you kind of got it where you're at is, is what you're saying. Well, yeah, I mean, like, so, I mean, I just, I emailed the guy because it didn't make sense to me because it's like, it's, I obviously knew that it was a, a, a cumulative amount of people and all of the data sets that he had were on a thousand, three thousand people. It wasn't these long, giant studies with millions of people. But then also, too, like I've mentioned in my podcast, it also only applies to Europeans. So you can't apply it to a Pakistani person in America right. or an African American. You can only apply it to European age males between 18 to whatever the age group that they did it at. So even that sample right. size, you know, doesn't make sense or whatnot. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's it important does. that you yeah. even got it because also too, now I've learned that androgens don't necessarily equate to your testosterone levels. So you can be really jacked and look really good, but it actually doesn't correlate with your testosterone levels inside your body. It, it does not. No, it doesn't. Um, you know, and that's, that's what I was saying is I, you know, I, I was working out, I was in, you know, pretty, pretty healthy shape. And what happened was I, I just got tested, man. Um, you know, normal is about 250 nanograms per deciliter <laughs> to 900. Um, All right. I'm at a 281 and ooh. you know, my prim my primary care physician tells me, Hey, you are, uh, within the normal range. So there's not, uh, there's nothing I can do. I can't order, you know, I can't. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Travis' can't direct quote is, I do not use the word normal because it gives a misrepresentation of my work. It does. That is a direct it does. quote, by the way, from him. And that, that is, that is, that <laughs> is a fantastic, yeah, that is a fantastic, um, you know, outlook on it because, I, I, you know, a lot of prescribers nowadays, a lot of doctors are bound by, um, you know, insurance guidelines and they've yeah. been prescribing, you know, treatments based on what, insurance companies say is okay what they can you know what i mean what they and it's it's sad it's like they're almost puppets to insurance companies oh yeah absolutely. um where, whereas like the new the new guys that are out there clinics like the one that i own the one the guys that are actually passionate about ha, you know hypogonadism and you know realize that it's a it's a national problem in the united states based on however you've got it primary secondary hypogonadism yeah. you know um, it, it's a problem. It's something that we're, you know, a lot of males in the United States are dealing with and we just want to feel better, you know? So and you're actually I, I, only about 35 minutes or an hour away from Fort Bragg, right? Correct. Yes. Where, where yes. are you located? Uh, Lake Wiley, South Carolina. It's, it's like 20 minutes South of Charlotte, basically Charlotte. Oh, wow. Okay. And well, this is really important, right? Because your patient population, I would assume over 50% is military, right? That's that is very um, very correct, actually. Okay. Um, I, know, I knew and, it was and... close, but I would just <laughs> kind of assume that that population is that. And what I'm getting by that is so when in terms of of the veterans population, there was a, a study that I just saw. I have to track it down again. Um, it was over eighty three thousand veteran patients from the VA, 
And that study was like one of the largest uh, studies with testosterone. And it was like the patients who it, it wasn't even optimal. It was just testosterone replacement in general. So bad therapies, good therapies, different modalities, didn't matter what it is. But it was 20% lower risk of heart attack, just like all cause mortality is just like down by 50%. Like it was a crazy study. I'm looking at this and like, okay, why is this not more popular? Even in the TRT community, no one was talking about that study. It was really strange. To me. Yeah. And you're saying from, from testosterone replacement therapy, you're seeing a reduction in um, heart attacks. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of actually, you know, co uh, morbidities, you know, like a oh, yeah. morbid, morbid um, conditions such as that. Um, yeah, you're seeing a reduction in, in um, you know, heart attacks, cardiac events. Um, you're seeing a now. I will say there, there's testosterone does does have its, you know, there are some things that that can cause complications from testosterone, like everything else. It is not a magic bullet. Yes, um, absolutely. But but I think what I tell my patients is, um, you know, you're safer being on testosterone than having low testosterone yeah the in the numbers, long run my, my knowledge is from the estrogeneration and the and the other book is that we are 20 percent lower in testosterone than our grandparents and then we're losing two to seven percent of testosterone per year and that's at like uh, an that epidemiological is true. like na like global level <laughs> so like yes, i can't imagine I, what I it is for that. the individual right yeah absolutely um, and so back to wrapping this into the military situation. Yes, a lot of my patients are, um, you know, ex-military and and law enforcement because there are things that oh, honestly, yeah. I truly believe this. I believe that veterans, um, you know, they go through an immense amount of stress, especially if they're active duty. And and it's just so sad because they're out there doing everything they can for us and for our country. And at the same time they're they're putting their bodies under this this immense amount of stress and they develop disorders psychological sometimes or traumatic brain injuries and those affect testosterone greatly so it's no shock yeah. to me that you know a lot of the people that i reach out to um that you know are are or reach out to me and say i've got low testosterone or do have a military career you know either current or past or they've you know they're dealing with other things such as uh you know anxiety depression things like that and it's not all it is related to the testosterone but you know the anxiety depression and everything that also goes along with it i feel like they deal yeah. with uh, um you know being on stress like that being on a stress um being in a stress situation like that for a prolonged period of time um it puts a strain on your pituitary okay yep. and and so having that kind of strain on your pituitary and your and your stress your over over a certain period of time it deadens your natural testosterone production and the amount that um you're able to produce uh it you know the pituitary yeah. is the master gland and so that that's the issue is that it's going to affect your these, cortisol and your growth it hormone does. and thyroid yeah, and everything right Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it affects everything down to even your emotions um, leading up to your prefrontal cortex. I mean, it's it, it is insane just how, uh, you know, how how this population is affected with low testosterone. And so because you're shutting off that that loop, you know, you're not able and not not being able to produce testosterone. What it what it does is as it as the loop is shut off. You're basically stopping your testosterone production, but your testosterone is what you need in order to function normally <laughs> on a day to day basis. You know, emotionally, that's why we get brain fog, uh, concentration, things like that um, with low testosterone. So, yeah, it helps cognitive abilities. It helps, um, you know, even and the metabolism and muscle building, you know, that that's just that's just a perk to me, I feel like. Absolutely. but. I'm just, well, and the muscle know. part, I think, is actually very, very secondary because when we look at testosterone, I mean, it it's, one, it's a psych drug, so there's that. Yes. But then on top of the, like the the psychological like ease, e easing of a person, it's involved in like literally everything. And then I was looking at like the COVID numbers or something like that, and it's like the people with low testosterone 
had like a 60% increase of like dying from like uh, upper respiratory infections. Like, okay, well, that's another reason in my back of my pocket to throw out, you know, if someone doesn't, exactly. doesn't really want to listen, that's the one thing they're probably not going to argue about. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and like I said, there's, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. You know, I mean, if you're, a, if you're abusing testosterone, okay. Yeah you actually open yourself up to um, a decreased immune system, you know, I, yeah. uh, and it's because your body just doesn't know what to do with all of that. Um, so but if you're, if you're talk about the different modalities, right, you can kind of talk about it in a more technical yeah. way that I think gets lost. And, you know, I use a lot of plumber speak or, um, you know, even Dr. Morgenthaler, right? He has to, he tries to break it all the way down to like a second grade level, which I kind of agree with, but yeah, uh, say you say you have someone that comes into your, to your office and you've tested them or whatnot. Um, you know they come back. You know I've got a, a 168 NGDL total testosterone. My free testosterone is 0.7. I feel like crap, but I want to yeah. have kids. You know I I've yeah. learned about clomid and and Um, if you you wouldn't mind kind of go in like so, what would be the use case for either using clomid or n clomiphene? And kind of not like how, how would you use that as a therapy for the person that might want to have kids or you just may want to go more conservative? You know, how would you utilize that option? So for for Clomid, um, you know, what what I would usually suggest would be. Um, let's see. I would I would do honestly a, a lower dosage of Clomid. I think Clomid is great, but I also think that the best drug that we usually recommend would be HCG. Okay. Okay. So use for, utilizing for, HCG monotherapy that yeah, maintains fertility. Yes. 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 Well. Yeah. And and you know, I'm freaked out by the eye damage stuff with Clomid. So that's why I'm asking you about that. So I, I had I, floaters in my eyes, and it damaged yeah. my eyes, and so I've been coming up a pro- proponent for and clomiphene since it basically replaces it, or you know, HCG monotherapy or something like that to play it safe. But basically, discontinuing Clomid at, at all because we have enclomiphene. My understanding is it doesn't create those problems in the eyes. I don't know why, but I guess it doesn't. Yeah, um, with Clomid, you get you get some other things. I mean, Clomid is a a, a cancer drug. You know, okay. um, I I don't think that uh, Clomid is is actually the best choice for for fertility. Um, you know, HCG well, so does the, the HCG, right? You're you're affecting at the higher level too, right? Uh, I don't know what right. the higher level is, but I think it's uh, if you wouldn't mind explaining it, where where does HCG hit and then do things to then um, promote testosterone? Promote testosterone? Uh, um, yeah, because it's going to go down the latex cells or something like that, and then promote it, inter, it, inter- exactly, inter- exactly. Inter- exactly. So, um, yeah. So with with the HCG, what I you know what what I usually so my personal my personal protocol right now for HCG is I'm I'm doing about 25, 25 units per um, per injection so twice a week I'm doing about fifty units a week and that's that basically helps me to maintain fertility right there. However, someone who was trying to you know increase fertility. I would I would do a, a higher dosage of that. You know, they they will blast HCG for a particular period of time, sure. um, a couple times a week. They will do. I mean, honestly, I think it's around I think it's around like 500 units. You know, yeah. like something large like that. Um, as far as fertility and it's goes, but the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and then going to where? Or am I from wrong the pituitary? From the pituitary. It is, let's see, yeah, it stimulates the Leydig cells, um, essentially to, double check here. I want to double check what I'm saying here before I say it. <laughs> so it's actually not something that we, we we dispense every day in my day-to-day pharmacy career. We can't even get a hold of HCG uh, at your local CVS. You have to go through a clinic. Basically. Oh, you can't get pregnant or something like that there? Um, you cannot. You cannot get 
human chorionic gonadotropin at, at your local CVS. Oh, interesting. So I have a hometown like pharmacy, but it's independently owned, and they just have pregnal there. But I guess they probably had to go out of their way to get it, probably. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So um, there was this whole diatribe when obviously there was different regulations that came out or whatnot, and I sourced through my own uh, pharmacy as a backup. So if uh, Brooksville and Hollandale and you know you name your big pharmacy can't get it, at least my pharmacy is the last choice. Rots Pharmacy, you can just call them up. And they'll get you pregnal, and uh, that's just the big pharma HCG formulation or whatever. But they got it, and you know it's a thing. So there's no even if your your comp your compounding pharmacy or your your clinic won't get it for you, you can always just have your doc send in a prescription, and they'll they'll get it for you at my hometown one if you need to. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so last year I will let me go into this while I'm while I'm getting getting some information here. Um, so last a couple of years ago, actually, um, you know, our our clinic system, you know, I'm I own one clinic. All right. Mm-hmm. We are a base of 30 clinics in the United States at this moment. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, there. They're, and, and so we all stem from a larger clinic in Florida. Sure. Um, but you know, not everyone wants to drive to Florida to you know oh, get yeah. that. But we we offer we offer telemedicine now. Um, and so a couple of years ago, there was a shortage of HCG in the United States. Yes, yeah. you could not get it. It it was impossible, right? So what we did is we actually purchased all of the human chorionic gonadotropin in the United States for like. 250 grand and that way we could keep our patients ahead of the game and make sure that they are taken care of if they want hcg you know i mean there is uh the gonadarellin which we offer also oh i I don't even uh, i've I've looked into this that science for me is just this gets too technical and this is a jordan grant thing this is a this is a urology yeah. thing that I'm not even touching. I, I barely yes. even tried to learn it because it's just so complex to me. I, I was like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And he, I mean, he definitely knows what he's talking about. I, I have, uh, you know, reached out to him sometimes with questions, honestly. I've stayed away from um, urology topics on purpose because this is, a, yeah. when you were talking about the, um, which is very important for patients to know, uh, as a contraindication, active cancers are a contraindication without talking to an expert like Dr. Morgenthaler or Dr. Uh, Jordan Grant. If it's not from those two guys, I don't trust it. So if you have active cancer, don't even do it. Get a, get a, a consultation with, uh, with the two experts. And if they tell you it's cool to go off to another doctor, then do it. Um, but unless it's from them, don't. But even with yes. cancer, testosterone uh, does not necessarily negatively affect it. But you have to have that sign off from a good doctor and not from a regular doctor or even a regular endocrinologist or regular euro. It's got to be from an expert. I don't trust anybody else when it comes to this. Uh, when it comes to testosterone and an active cancer, it's a, it's a three-part subspecialty that only those guys are going to know about. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's you know that that's that's what I'm saying. I am not a urologist. Okay. I do, I am not a cancer doctor. Um, I am a pharmacist. I understand how the drugs work um you know in your system as far as as far as you know the the feedback loops for testosterone uh things like that um hcg Actually, it's something i wanted to ask you too so since uh, since uh-huh. i know that you're you're a pharmacist and all that um mm-hmm. so something that dr mark gordon was kind of pushing which he hasn't really popularized it yet i know that he's trying to he was pop trying to popularize sublingual either testosterone propionate or uh, whatever it would be that's sublingual and it's like without an ester or something like that. So it's just like direct mm-hmm. under the tongue testosterone as more of like a more like you're on TRT, but you want like a morning supplement to kind of get you going kind of thing. Yeah. I, I've never heard any long term safety on this or like anything. Uh, how would that have a place in this kind of stuff? He was he was talking about it once and it was interesting to me at least. Well, um, I have seen that there are some some pharmacies that are, um, you know, compounding testosterone droplets sublingual okay. um, that are that are 
you know, I don't think you're going to get the type of absorption from that that you're going to get from from an intermuscular injection, honestly. Um, ah, so even and, with propionate to uh, sublingual yeah. without an ester, you're, you're, you're having a problem where it needs to shuttle it, and I would assume maybe albumin's just going to scoop it up or something? Or, what, yeah, or SHPG yeah. or whatever it would be? Yeah, you're going to... Oh, that's the thing, is it's going gonna, it's gonna to degrade probably before you actually get the utilization out of it that you need. You know? So this is um, my beef with trochies, right? There's still a certain amount of pe places that I hear that are doing trochies and testosterone. I, I think there might be a case maybe for women, I guess, maybe, because they don't need as much. So I guess that 50 milligram tablet would then go down to right. roughly 5 milligrams or something, which actually makes sense right. for women. Um, right. I don't know that. There's definitely no long-term data on that. I have no idea what that would do long-term. It doesn't make sense to me. But <laughs> Right, right. Because you're, you're, what you're going to get is, I mean... You're gonna get you're gonna get um, you know metabolism. Our metabolism actually degrades drugs down. Uh, you know, I would say CYP450. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So our cytochrome cytochrome P450 enzymes is is um, you know basically what we use to metabolize drugs. Um, any drug, any drug that we take. You know, you have oh, different it's enzymes. All that, drugs. So it's not just uh, these uh, CYP medications. Okay, interesting. No, it's it's every drug. Yeah, your okay. your your cytochrome P450 enzymes. Um, those metabolize, and it, it could be CYP3A4 that metabolizes blood pressure medicine. Uh, you know, each each enzyme basically has different drugs that it metabolizes. Um, now, the majority of our our drugs are metabolized through uh, CYP3A4, which is is the main one and that's why they tell you not to eat like grapefruit um you know with, with <laughs> yeah. your blood pressure medicine um and and the reason is because the the CYP3A4 enzyme uh grapefruit acts as an inhibitor of that enzyme and therefore I've heard of CRT anything... patients trying to take that to do stuff and I'm like do not mess with that I don't know why I just know that it messes with it and don't do it like it, it yeah it, grapefruit in my opinion is a drug and you should look at it as a drug if you're well, taking medications, well, do not take that because it is a drug. Like it's acting on stuff to move things. It is. It's it's an, it can act as an inhibitor, just like another drug on on a CYP enzyme, you know. And wow. and so so, um, but there's a lot of things that are that are you know um, inhibitors of the CYP three A four in particular. Oh wow. Um, three A four. And honestly, so this conversation is not being talked about at all with TRT. Um, I've had a hypothesis now that with TRT patients, uh, or for TBI patients, traumatic brain injury patients, that anybody who's been mm -hmm. exposed to burn pits or has had a, um, a traumatic event, that there's some sort of process that's being inhibited with either CYP or aromatase function in general, or some other process in which it seems to be that there's more and more TBI patients who are on higher and higher doses of medications. Now, obviously, there's no established, that is right? Interesting. You're, you know, you have, like, uh, a weight. So we don't have established weight uh, per testosterone dosing, right? So there's not, we don't have that. But then also, no. we don't have any data on, so what happens after your HPTAG has been impaired and then the uptake of the medication? So, like, for myself, I only get, like, 30 NGDL free testosterone off of like 250 milligrams of testosterone. And so then we have these gurus on YouTube, um, you know, Derek from Place for Dates, Greg Doucette. Oh, yeah, I've heard, I've heard of that guy. Saying, <laughs> um, you know, 200 milligrams is a steroid cycle. Like, okay, well, are you not a good enough patient as the patient uh, population that was done in a cancer study that they were using 650 milligrams? Now, you know, our, 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 so our, our clinical tested safe dosages are 100 to 650 milligrams. Now, obviously, when you get up above a certain amount, right, and you, we get into larger and higher doses, right, this gets into, you know, there's all kinds of risks that are involved. But as a rule, that is our clinically safe and tested doses that has a pr FDA approval on uh, the, the safety of it. Now, it doesn't mean that you should do it. It just means that there is. What I'm getting there at is, is that... Mm -hmm. If you uh, th this idea of bodybuilding dosages, 
And there's no science to back that up. So we'll have people, you know, giving out plumber speak of, oh, you know, this is that. Well, you know, you can't necessarily apply that to all people. And then two, right, I was just looking into the data on opioid receptor um, inhibition of testosterone. I was like, oh, wow. Okay, this is not being talked about at all. I knew it was something. Mu receptors? Yeah, so I, I, get, I don't know what the function is, but it, it's obviously o- when you're taking opioids, um, uh, pain patients like myself, you're on mm-hmm. these medications and it's going to be destroying whatever the process is of testosterone. And so there's even that process too. So I'm like, okay, you know, we cannot, I mean, I personally, I will not allow anybody to say one dose is a body building dose or not. You have to treat everybody as individuals and their own CYP and aromatase function is their own independent, you know, function. Yeah, um, exactly. So I have patients uh, currently that that I dispense, you know, four hundred milligrams a week to, right? And and they I I and they can get up to like maybe thirty or forty NGDL free testosterone, right? I doubt that they're even into the hundreds there. Right, and it's it's like, do you think that guy came in here with you know any any lower testosterone than any anybody else? Probably yeah. not. It just they just need more sometimes because they are not um as receptive to it as as others you know and for me like i'm at i'm at 200 milligrams a week right now okay and to greg just and, that's a bodybuilding dose for me that's actually a low dose <laughs> right for a lot of people that's a low dose for me that and, would give me like 20 ngdl free testosterone popcorn. see and that's crazy <laughs> i would that's feel like crazy. absolute crap on that yeah and i yeah, did that, that i tested crazy. i did 100 i did 150 i did uh 250 and then i landed uh-huh. you know above uh, above 275 somewhere around there and mm-hmm. um i i've i've scaled it and i felt you know a lot better on a, on one dose but then also too right we don't have any data on on dose frequency at all i mean i've tried to research this and there's just nothing there's there's no clinical study i can find that has um the 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 cyp uh data along with the frequency of injection that will tell you at like a large scale what these drugs do and and your your dose frequency i mean there's all this in clinical anecdotal data yeah yeah there yeah exactly um and you know so so for for me personally um i'm at 200 milligrams a week and for me that you know like for you that does nothing for me my levels are at uh 1450 right now and and of your total so, so that's uh like 25 30 uh free testosterone or something like that yes exactly okay so so yeah i'm talking about the total sorry and um you know i, mean, <laughs> I think I, I, I think in patient outcomes and i think in i i only think in free testosterone because i don't want people to get confused um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was thinking well from Doctor. There. So from Doctor Keith Nichols, his concept is that the the uh, symptom resolution comes from between let's say two point five percent, roughly three percent, to five percent uh, of your total testosterone, which is roughly twenty NGDL to fifty NGDL, somewhere in in there, up or down uh, of the free testosterone. And that, I guess that's because they're doing their research studies. And this is also where Scott Howell comes in which I think is really important that we need to impart this data of androgen proliferation. So we have this misconcept of like, oh, your dose is your dose without having an idea of androgen receptor proliferation and that we're not scaling the dosages. So I'm really looking forward to when Scott, uh, Dr. Scott is able to um, impart this into the community because my personal feeling is that we're going to find out that you can scale the dosages even higher and have better outcomes and there might be an upwards down regulation, meaning that the higher medications that you're pushing over time may actually go lower, but then you'll have a homeostasis in which you'll have as much androgen receptors at a certain dosage, and then you would then have a homeostasis period for 20 years or whatever it is, but you only get to that by going to those higher dosages through a, like a time period, so like five or 10 right. years of going higher of the dosages. Right. I just made and, that up. You, I have no clue if that's true, but it's just it makes yeah. sense in my head. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's it's it sounds it sounds good. I I think that there's there's a lot of room for research though, um in that uh because then you have to look at the negative side effects that you're getting by going to those higher dosages everywhere else. Oh yeah. But 
But, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that, uh, a lot of patients really understand that, um, you know, test the difference between testosterone and like you were talking about a steroid cycle. Um, yes. Yeah, and I actually there was some uh, guys on um, one of the groups today that one of their doctors still had them on once a month, which I blew my mind. I, I want to get that doctor's information and report them to the medical board. And then ridiculous. another doctor who is then doing every two week injections. I'm like, what are these guys high? Like, wh- how do they bomb like med school that bad? Like, wh- how how did you do that? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I see I see so many patients. Uh, you know, even. Even medications that, you know, like on a daily basis that these patients or prescriptions that these patients are bringing to me and it's, it's like inject 200 milligrams every two weeks. And I'm like, do you realize the the kind of damage that you're, you're doing to this patient just mentally, honestly, because you're, you're getting such peaks and and not using plumber's feet. This is chemical castration and you're raising the person really, really high and bottoming them out completely low. So they'll go up to like 2,000 uh, total testosterone and then dump out at like 20 total testosterone. This is very dangerous and very bad and not how the medication works. Exactly. So the, the, a, good, a good physician, a good clinic, you know, is going to do more frequent dosing uh, in order to minimize the effects that the patient's going to feel. You know, what, over the long term, the goal is to... Like, I mean, I mean, you already know this. The goal is to play on the half-life of the testosterone, you know, particularly when we start patients on this longer ester testosterone because of injection frequency. And, you know, testosterone cypionate has, uh, what, a 10-day half-life uh, about somewhere around there. And, and so we do frequent frequent injections so that they don't get those rise and falls um but we do start patients off somewhere around depending on their levels um now there are particular cases like what you're talking about um you know with with having um a lower function in androgen receptors where we have to once we see how that is right even going from you know 100 milligrams and then scaling that up over the course of a couple of months, I see no reason why not to do that. E- even yeah, in the yeah. basically standardizing it, which you do 100 milligrams for one week, then you go up to 200, and then you know go up above there. But that you do it well, on a scaled level so that you have like yeah. some sort of process that's going to happen. For it. it it's still it's it's still better than what they were getting. You <laughs> the know, once a month. Um, Here's a gram yeah, of medication. Have fun. Yeah. So, so I think, yeah, it's important. We start everyone off around like, um, I would say anywhere from 150 ish, maybe a hundred to, to, I've, I've started, we've started people off around 250 sometimes, you know? But yeah, and we, we talked about though, the doses are relevant, right? It's really the frequency of injection starting out though. It is. Yeah. So we always do twice, twice a week for cypionate is what we recommend. Um, and a, a lot of people, a lot of people do very well with that. You know, some people end up having, by the way, do you, you think know, you're going still, at one o'clock? Um, yeah, about okay. one, so, 15, uh, somewhere around there. Okay, great. Uh, I, I want to kind of, uh, what are some of the things that you guys are offering in your clinic that you think separates you from, you know, I find my low T clinic. It's on the side of the street in my town, but I don't really know if they're the best. And I've heard about thrive. What are you offering that's a little bit different than other other places? Well, one thing that we offer is uh, availability, uh, and that comes down to everything from price. Uh, so we we do have that. Plus, um, you know, I, I am a pharmacist. I'm a pharmacist for for um, for alternative medicine, um, oh, wow. which is our our larger. Uh, yeah, do you guys actually have a, uh, an in house pharmacy? Do you actually run the pharmacy technically? We actually, we I think it's legal to run it in there, which is how I kind of got started because I wanted to do a compounding pharmacy on the side, and uh, basically I called them, my clinic, them, uh, to see if they would like to contract a nurse practitioner out to me uh, to do to order lab results, and I would do consultations and make all of the testosterone and drugs in house in a hood. Sure. Um, and, you know, for me, it just seemed like I like that 
I'm more interested in that than, than community pharmacy. So it seemed like a good idea to me. Well, then they asked me, do you want to, well, are you looking to franchise? And I was like, maybe let's talk, you know? <laughs> so, so I found that, you know, by opening Thrive, I'm able to help so many more people than I would have been even just doing my local consultations because it opened me up to the world of telemedicine. Oh, yeah. Um, but now we, so what makes us different, like you said, is, is, um, we are able to offer, uh, essentially low, 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 low costs. Like our TRT programs start at like 99 bucks a month, you oh, know, that's great. and, 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 and only that comes from scale. I mean, that, that's, it's rough to get there as a new it, startup. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, $99 a month where we're affordable. Um, plus all of our practitioners, all of them, uh, are always doing continuous, continuing education and oh, wow. hormone really? replacement therapy. Um, always doing, uh, you know, we do medical weight loss. We do, um, a lot of different stuff, but yeah, the I'm in one of the big, that, uh, men's, um, dad bod transformation groups. And, yeah, you know, they yeah. have 63,000 people that are in there. And then some yeah. of the guys, you know, that, I mean, you're, you're looking at, losing a hundred pounds or something like that. And I make it very clear. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you need heart imagery. You need blood work. Like you need a, a lot of stuff. A, yeah. This eat, needs to be monitored. Eat something and, you know, take some vitamin D or something like that. No, that's a major, major health thing. And you need to work with a, a, a doctorate team who can actually help you, you know, accomplish that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I know, uh, a meal, you might, might know a meal. Yes. He's, he started that group. Um, uh, Emil's a great guy and we're, we're, um, we're Hopefully teammates. My next interview, so. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're, we're teammates, um, yeah. in, in this, uh, he's a sister clinic to, to mine. That's cool. And, uh, so yeah, and we're speaking of the clinic. Do you guys offer in house? Do you guys do, uh, IV infusions and that sort of thing? We do. We do IV infusions. We do, um, uh, sports medicine. Um, yeah. you know, we, we kind of dip into, into everything. Well, but I was got, just thinking, um, so like, you know, all the military people or whatnot, something that's really important, I mean, post any deployment that you go on to, and really after basic training and then any major training kind of thing, you really need to be dumping all the nonsense that's in your body through glutathione IVs and vitamin C IVs and that sort of thing to be able to, to get your body healthy and that sort of thing. And that only comes from IV infusions. You can do it through supplements but in my i don't think it really works as well and the, and the best it doesn't way to do because it is to have those infusions well, with the iv therapy you avoid first pass metabolism completely and so that's going to degrade everything you're taking in to begin with you know yeah. uh orally so you lose a lot of the um you know actual dosage in in vitamins that you're trying to replenish with via first pass metabolism that's with any drug you know, I mean, it, it, that's why you get such better results from IV therapy for yeah. everything. Really, it takes a lot less. Well, it's great um, that you're so close potency. and whatnot. And, uh, and two, I definitely want to have a conversation with you uh, on another podcast or whatnot about, you know, TBI treatment and that sort of thing. It's going to be a, a long conversation. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one last Actually, thing I wanted I to ask you, I know you have to get going today. and whatnot. <laughs> um, where do you see TRT or fun you know, functional medicine in general going as a pharmacist? Like, or, or what okay. things are we not doing that we can do? So functional medicine, TRT down the road. Um, I honestly think that with the rise of clinics right now, um, you know, a lot of pharmacies, if you went and talked to a pharmacist at your local drugstore, they don't know anything about TRT. They don't teach us that in pharmacy school to a certain degree. I know that sounds horrible. They tell us what it does. But they don't teach people about TBIs, what causes hypogonadism, things like that. Um, you know, that comes from continuing education. So myself, for instance, I, I have a level two certification in functional pharmacy. And I did it through continuing education. It's a new, progr a new program under uh, 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 a pharmacist that is certified to do CEs through the, the company FreeCE.com. And uh, so they'll do certifications. His name is Robert Kress. He's a full-time functional pharmacist and is, is large into supplementation, vitamins, things like that, uh, hormone replacement. Um, that's what that certification preps you for, essentially. I see other pharmacists getting into functional pharmacy. I'm early in the game, you okay. know? Can you hear me still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You can hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm early in the game with this uh, for, for pharmacists. A lot of pharmacists do not know uh, anything about functional pharmacy, but I see pharmacists being uh, playing a larger role in TRT with their patients and being able to discuss it at a higher level. Um, also, as that comes along, so will functional medicine with, uh, you know, your primary care physicians, because as we as we almost exploit the 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 I would say almost pandemic with, um, you know, hypogonadism, low testosterone going on in the nation with uh, males and females, um, oh, yeah. you know, I think that people have no choice but to open up. That's why you're getting all these new therapies with pellets and things like that, you know? Um, so I would like to see, I would like to see in the next five to 10 years, um, maybe pharmacists, I would like to see pharmacists get prescribing rights, honestly, um, to oh, the point yeah, where, you know, you we, we can like, go out and you, help patients Technically, at a you have level. to work under a, a nurse prac or an MD in your state or, or they allow you to? Uh, yes, we have to work under a nurse prac or, or an MD. Okay. Uh, I think in Virginia they're allowed to, but I think there's, and it probably wouldn't apply to growth hormone or any controlled drug. It's probably only going to apply to like, you know, influenza yes. shots and, you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. stuff. You know? Yeah. So I can write a prescription for immunizations and things like that. But, um, you know, I, I, we do, we do have a doctor that, that allows me to to do that uh right now we're still in the basic basics of it like we're working on trying to get prescribing rights for birth control and things like that um oh we'll definitely have to I have did... this conversation so i found out that what my tenant um is on like a synthetic uh a progestin and uh synthetic yeah. estrogen and i blew the flip up i was like what are you talking about and she has all these depressive symptoms all this kind of stuff i'm like okay yeah this is not and i'm looking into it and i'm like one i have no clue about the dosing of this stuff they're talking about cycling these medications towards your menstruation all this okay this is baffling but in any case it was like it is not bioidentical it's not made to you as a a person you gotta get off this crap you gotta get on you know what other i you know i bioidenticals but this stuff is dangerous like do not be messing with this stuff and uh, it blew my mind they're even still giving it out. I didn't even know that that progestins were allowed to be given out. It's like, wow, okay, this is crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, they are allowed to be given out and uh, pretty pretty freely. And that's my thing is like uh, to me that's just as dangerous as any other steroid. So well, it's like it's methyl testosterone in my head. I mean, my understanding is progestins cause cancer. I mean, it's not it's they, not they micronized can. bioidentical progesterone. They can. And you've got your your young teens on on that. You know, I mean, you're thinking anybody from like, you know, 13 and up. And it's like it just is like a social norm, you know. Wow. And it's funny how it's that's looked at like that. But yet testosterone replacement therapy is looked at as the devil by a lot of, you know, primary care physicians. We we already talked about the HCG thing. Right. So in my head, you know, everybody talks about it as some sort of monotherapy of just you know testosterone is going to shut down your fertility and my next thing is freeze your sperm get on hcg like what are you talking about but that's yeah. not a thing like you don't do monotherapy and the whole point of this trt thing is we're not really doing trt it's marketing to get people in the door we're doing functional medicine and you treat yes. from the top to the bottom of the whole exactly. person and you can't just do yes. monotherapy for anything where there's one no, where there's smoke the whole building's on fire so <laughs> yeah Exactly, exactly. And that's the thing. We try to avoid band-aids. And re- that's why we run lab results, because you can't even get you can't even hardly get lab results done at your primary care if you're, you know, under 45 for testosterone. Uh, they will laugh my nurse practitioner you, didn't know what T3 and T4 was. She really? She only knew what TSH was. So it's like, OK, we're not having this conversation. Like, See, that <laughs> is ridiculous. Bad. You know, I'm like, I'm like. So, yeah, in our panels, you, you know, we test for, um, you know, TSH, T3, T4. <laughs> so, so, uh, so before uh, we go, cause I know you have to have to get going, um, tell everybody, um, the, your website for the clinic and where you're located and how to get a hold of you. Okay. So, um, we're located basically Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, the Carolinas, but you know, we can serve all over the United States. It's not just, it's not just those areas. Um, you can look at our website. It's www.thrive.com. 
And if you go to that website and just click get started now or get started online, um, it'll take you directly to our intake form. You just fill that out. It's about five minutes. And uh, that just gets you on our contact list. And we pretty much go from there. That just gets the ball rolling. And then our uh, patient coordinators will reach out to you. Um, or you can call at 704-533-9940. Um, you know, that is, that, that's our, I would say our number to our larger system. Uh, and you'll choose option eight for Thrive Alternative Medicine. Um, that's right. But yeah, yeah, you should, uh, you should look us up. One of the biggest things that, like you were saying, that we offer that other clinics don't is, you get you get uh you get service companionship with uh with me because I am going to make myself available to you at all hours. If you have questions, if there's something I can do for you, um I will I will personally call and have it taken care of that day or you know at least at the latest the next day. You can generally uh expect a a reply from me personally. Um you know, it, you can find me on social media, you can uh you know, honestly, I don't care. I'll give you my phone number. It's 304-320-1399. You just give me a call and we can talk. We can, uh, anytime you can text me. And, um, you know, I got a patient actually that reached out to me right during, during this on Facebook messenger. She says, uh, she says, I just got my medicines. And, uh, is there a video or some guidance you can give me on how to get started with it? And I'm like, so that's what I'm about to do actually oh, right that's after this is, is reach out to her. So that's the kind of service that you get. It yeah. is, uh, Face to face, so that's awesome. You know, I really do yeah. appreciate you uh, taking the time to discuss things and whatnot. Um, and I'm definitely excited for like a TBI conversation and a long, yeah, in-depth, man. Uh, women's hormone replacement uh, uh, conversation because I don't know anything about it and nobody else does either. So and nobody's. I'll tell, I'll tell you though, that's what we've been doing a lot of, man. I've been in a lot of Facebook groups and things, talking to a lot of a lot of women that are. Um, you know, it's a big thing. And the thing is, these, these patients are desperate for relief. Oh, yeah. And the, I there's, mean, too, there's a transformation right now with this whole cycling of things. And I'm trying to wrap my head around it because it's not the same as men. So, you know, there's a lot that I, I want to learn about it. So I, yeah. uh, I don't want to take more of your time. I know you have oh, you're good. three jobs and you have to get back to a patient and all that. <laughs> so I, uh, I really do appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with me. And uh, you have a really awesome weekend. Thanks, man. I appreciate the opportunity, Brad, and all you guys out there. Thanks for listening, and um, you know, just make sure that uh, if you if you need anything at all, to reach out to me because I'll do my best to help any way I can. Awesome. Thank you so much, Casey. Thanks. Bye bye.